The best Samsung phone that you are not buying. What's up guys, so I made a similar video last year talking about the best Samsung phone that you're not buying. And now in 2019, I feel like it's time to update this video because we have a brand new value for money baby in town. Well, not actually brand new, but still it is a value beast indeed. I present you the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus. The phone that originally came out with a near $1,000 price can now be purchased for around $300 price range which is absolutely crazy for a smartphone of this caliber. With the recent software updates and enhancements, Samsung has made this phone an even greater value for money. Now don't get me wrong, the best Samsung phone as far as the specs and features are concerned is definitely the Galaxy S10 Plus with the updated design and everything. It is the most advanced Samsung flagship phone right now but it's a really expensive phone and not everyone can afford it but if you can then definitely go ahead, the door is open. But for the rest of you who are tight on budget, who just want to save money and the want to have a Samsung phone that is the absolute best for value then S9 Plus is it. Now at a $300 price range, the Galaxy S9 Plus is competing right next to the mid-range level phones. Samsung has improved their Galaxy A lineup so much this year. We have the updated design, minimal bezels, great battery life, good camera features and everything. But still, you know they say, old flagships are always better than the mid-rangers. That statement is still true. And the Galaxy S9 Plus is the absolute proof of that. So at the price of a 2019 mid-ranger phone, the Galaxy S9 Plus is packing a lot of features. First and foremost, if we talk about the display of the Galaxy S9 Plus, it is still rocking. A Quad HD Infinity display, this is the best representation of the old design. No notch, no hole whatsoever. In comparison to the Galaxy S10 Plus, when you put the two generations side by side, you can really tell how much Samsung has improved with their Infinity O design, but it's still not perfection. We have holes on the display, which means when you're watching a full screen video or playing a game this will appear all the time you cannot remove it but that being said you can get used to it but the old design definitely has this advantage it may have thicker bezels but again no interruptions whatsoever when you're watching full screen video so that is still a slight advantage of the old design now something i completely forgot after coming back from the galaxy s10 to the s9 plus is that the s9 plus actually had 3d touch home button which was really useful you could instantly exit any application without any problem whereas we don't have it here obviously samsung had to put the 3d touch finger scanner inside the display so this is again something that i now enjoy and admire on the galaxy s9 plus now Speaking of the fingerprint scanner, the S9 Plus has the best physical fingerprint scanner on a phone. May not be fancy as the Galaxy S10 Plus in display fingerprint scanner, which by the way is really really improved, but here this works all the time as well, pretty much 99% of the time. It's definitely a better fingerprint scanner than the ones we have seen inside the mid-range Samsung phones, the optical scanner. The overall design of the Galaxy S9 Plus is still one of the best. I mean, at this price, you are getting a full glass bag that supports wireless charging. You get metal on the side. It feels super premium. And it's also one of the last Samsung phones to support the headphone jacks. So it's pretty much a complete smartphone design. In comparison to the mid-rangers that Samsung is offering in this price range, the S9 S9 Plus is definitely in its own league. Now the Galaxy S9 Plus originally came out with Android 8.0 Oreo and it has received its biggest software update which is the One UI. It completely changes the whole look. In the age of big screen smartphones, Samsung has built their UI so that we can use it with just one hand. Things like, things like bringing the notification panel with just a single swipe and also optimizing all the system based application for one headed experience, bringing all the major options in each application right at the reach of your thumb. You also get a proper dark mode, so pretty much all the changes that Samsung introduced with the Galaxy S10 Plus on the One UI is now here with the older S9 Plus. So you're really not missing anything out when it comes to the software updates. And now, and now Samsung had made things even sweeter for the S9 Plus. We have a dedicated night mode similar to the Galaxy S10 family which allows you to take great photos in dark condition. It really does make a difference. It adds brightness and also make images sharper than you would take in a normal mode. So night mode is definitely much, much appreciated. And just overall, the camera on the S9 Plus is still pretty damn good. I definitely miss the wide angle lens on the S9 Plus, which Samsung has provided to pretty much all of its smartphones that it released this year, the S10 family, the Galaxy Note family that is coming, as well as the Galaxy A series. So you get the wide angle lens, which you miss on the S9 Plus but it still is a very capable 
camera system and in a lot of situations you cannot tell the difference between the image taken from the S9 Plus and the S10 Plus. Now since this is the first major update for the S9 Plus means Samsung will definitely be bringing the Android Q 10.0 on the S9 Plus family as well. So if you plan on to use this phone for another year, you can still do that and maybe save money for the S12, who knows. By then we'll probably have a proper foldable phone as well. So things are looking nice if you save money. I mean, it's really up to the budget. And of course, for the budget, this phone is offering the best value. Now, one of the reasons why people avoid buying the last year flagship phones is because of the performance. And to clear all the doubts, I will be performing a speed test against the best of the Samsung, which is the S10 Plus. To give you guys an idea of speed but before I start off in general my experience with the Galaxy S9 Plus has been surprisingly good much better than the Galaxy S8 from last year the flagship chipsets are getting so good I guess the only major noticeable slow thing I would say on the S9 Plus is how much time it takes to process a night mode picture and a portrait selfie so those things are definitely improved they use the scene optimizer enhancements just like the S10 Plus I mean the image results are definitely better but it does take some time to process other than that the s9 plus has been pretty damn good now just to give you guys a quick demonstration i'm gonna perform a quick speed test against the galaxy s10 plus and uh, of course all the latest software updates are installed both are the exodus models so let's see which one boots up faster with the latest respective one ui software and you can see the S9 Plus actually boots up faster compared to the S10 Plus surprisingly. The S10 Plus is still taking some time and now it is done. Time for a quick benchmark warm up. We have Geekbench 4. You can see Exynos 9820, Exynos 9810 running CPU benchmark. All right, so both phones are done. The benchmark has fired up both devices. We have better scores, of course, as expected on the S10 Plus. You can definitely tell the S9 Plus is not far behind. Let's open some applications starting with phone dialer. Here we go. And you can see slightly quicker on the S10 Plus settings. And that's about the same. Moving on to some third party actions, starting with Subway Surfers. We have this popular game, and uh, look at the speed on the S10 Plus, it is done, whereas the S9 Plus is about taking some time. Obviously, you gotta keep the price in mind $300 versus a near $1,000 phone. By that standard, it's definitely not bad. Going on Instagram. And let's see, the latest feed is loaded up quicker on the Galaxy S9 Plus. Doing a bit of a scrolling, you can see both are pretty smooth. Launching Instagram camera, a bit quicker on the Galaxy S10 Plus. Checking out my profile, and that got loaded up quicker on the S9 Plus. So back and forth with the Instagram app. Snapchat, and a little bit quicker on the S10 Plus. Pinout, about the same. Reddit. A little bit quicker on the S10 Plus. Smash hit. Another game. And that is about the same on both phones. You can see the S9 Plus in some applications is keeping up right with the S10 Plus. Yes, Express. And once again, almost the same. The S10 Plus feels a little bit quicker, lining up the full gallery. Last but not the least, I'll be opening the cameras on both phones at the same time. And that is slightly quicker on the S10. So you can see the S9 Plus did surprisingly well in the apps opening battle. Let's test out the browsing performance of this phone as well. I'm using the default internet browser on both phones. So you can see really similar. It's kind of hard to tell which one is the winner. I think the S9 Plus might be slightly quicker there. Again, you guys are the judge. You can see scrolling looks really smooth on both phones. Now, next on the list is Apple.com, and that is quicker on the S9 Plus versus the S10 Plus, which took just a split second more. Now, time for the RAM management, starting with the Geekbench app that is still there on both phones. Phone dialer, still there. Subway Surfers, still there. Instagram, Snapchat, Pinout, Reddit, Smash Hit. Still there, Photoshop Express, and we are back to the browser. So pretty good performance comparable to, so you can see still the Galaxy S10 Plus is handling the latest One UI update and the S10 Plus pretty well. Again, considering it's $300 to $350 price, depending on what deal you get, the S9 Plus feels like the best Samsung phone 
for the money. Now, the other major concern regarding the S9 Plus is its battery life. So it's coming with a 3500 mAh cell and to be honest, Samsung has improved their battery life so much, not only on the S10 series, but also on their mid-range phones, which is absolutely amazing. So S9 Plus definitely not at the level of the current Galaxy A or the Galaxy S10 models when it comes to the best battery life, but it still is decent. I mean, you can get around three and a half to four hours of screen on time, depending on your usage. Mine is pretty high. High, constantly using social media and switching back and forth with YouTube using camera and stuff so it didn't last me the full day but still it was pretty close it does support the same fast charging standard as the S10 family so you are able to charge this phone to 100% in about in one hour and 20 minutes which is still not bad all in all as far as the value is concerned the s9 plus is the best samsung phone that you can buy right now compared to all the mid-range phones that are out it is still providing the most value and it still has the android q update coming as well so if you want to keep it for another year or if you want to save money for the s11 i think this phone is a pretty good option with that being said i will see you guys in the next video peace out